Hello there, YouTubers. It's me, Team Rarai, back with another podcast of Snake Eyes, episode 7. I have one of my friends here. We have a lot of stuff to discuss. First thing on agenda, we're going to talk about do you think this match will go down in TNA history at Bound for Glory 2013? Hulk Hogan versus Bully Ray. So, Tony, what's your quick thoughts? Well, uh, you know, nobody wants to, in my opinion, um, covering for most of the people out there, uh, nobody probably wants to see this match, neither do I, just because Hogan's old and washed up, uh, and, you know, and he, he's, you know, he's kind of done, basically. Uh, there's no reason for him to be wrestling, especially for a world title, like he's going to win it or something. If he does, I don't know, I'll probably stop watching TNA. That's what they'll fuck up the storyline. But, uh, you know what, uh, he just, uh, Hogan needs to, you know, stay as the general manager and make all the matches or whatever and call it a day. He don't need to be in the, in the ring every single time, you know, and uh, the, he needs to have the spotlight on some of the younger guys, so... Yeah, so uh, you know, Hogan, uh, if you're doing thinking of three of you thinking of doing this match, Hogan, uh, you better just uh, you know stay behind your little desk and uh, make the matches for TNA and let some young guy take a spot against Bully Ray if he's still the champion by then. So that's my thoughts on that. I totally agree. Now this is so stupid. Why in a blue moon you want to put Hulk Hogan in a spot? I know he had back surgery in the past. And he's not the same guy like he, he was a long time ago. I know he needs the money. I know he got divorced recently. That's the only reason he's in TNA. And that's why he just wants to be on TV more often. And I know he's doing a very good job as a general manager. And now, can you imagine, Tony, if he was a general manager and do you think they'll push him? Hell no. Uh Hell to the fuck no, hell no, he doesn't, uh, no, no way, uh, yeah, he, they would probably just keep him as a manager or something. Yeah, I mean, no, um, he will get no authority to make matches and all that good stuff. No title I mean, shots either. Yeah, I mean, I totally understand why, to want, why he wants to do this, because he want to get another title under his belt, does he really need it? No way in hell, because he's a Hall of Fame already from WWE. And let the young guys take over the spotlight. So that's all I'm going to say for that discussion. I don't think Hogan will ever leave TNA to jump to W. Because that ship has sailed a long time ago. Okay, another thing in the agenda. I found a great article online about WrestleMania 29 to set the record. So Tony, tell all the viewers about this article then i will jump on board all right basically i want to read it off here to you guys and uh yeah so uh basically it says wb announced thursday that wrestlemania 29 set a record as the highest grossing uh event in company history earning 72 million the figure is up for up from the 76 million grossed by wrestlemania 28 last year so i'm guessing they're saying 29 uh grossed um uh, what do you call it? They got more money than that uh, 20, uh, 28, which is good. And also says, WWE issued a press release stating that the show will once again exceed 1 million pay-per-view buys worldwide. A pre preliminary estimate revealed to Variety, Variety show that WrestleMania 29 will reach 1.2 million buys on pay-per-view, less than the record 1.3 million sold for last year's event. However, it was noted that the number could still increase. Highest grossing WrestleMania ever, Stanford, Connecticut, April 25th, 2013. WB, uh, NYSE, WB Today announced that WrestleMania 29 held Sunday, April 7th at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. Grossed an uh, excess of $72 million, the highest grossing event in WB history. In addition, to, in addition, WrestleMania 29 will once again exceed 1 million global pay-per-view buys and attracted a, crowd, a sold-out crowd of 80,000. 676 fans from all 50 states and 34 countries at MetLife Stadium. New Orleans, Louisiana will be the site of next year's WrestleMania, which will take place Sunday, April 6, 2014 at the Mercedes-Benz Mercedes -Benz Superdome. Ticket information will be announced later this year. Man, that is awesome. 
man, I bet McMahon's happy about this. Um, how much money they they rolling in at WrestleMania 29? You agree with yeah, this, Tony? Yeah, the, the genetic jackhammer is happy about this. Was... Damn. Now, do you think because it was the the John Cena versus the Rock number two, or do you think the CM Punk Taker match? Do you think that's why they brought all that money, or the whole show overall? I think honestly, it was maybe the whole show, uh, most likely overall, just because you had a lot of matches going. I mean, they had let's see, you had Lesnar on the card, you had Taker, and yeah, you had the Rocket, you know, and uh, you have those kind of guys. And then you know, you had your other guys like uh, Triple H, you know, kind of making another, you know, an appearance. And then you had Punk also, and you had Cena. I guess all the Cena fans, the Cena marks out there. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, um, so basically, apparently, what it's saying is. 29 is the, the, like, what do you call it? It's, like, gross the most, like, the best crowd ever. Like, uh, the most people have watched the, uh, what do you call it, WWE pay-per-view. The Mania, has made the, Mania 29 has made the biggest list. It's the, the highest one up there. I just can't imagine what's going to happen next year at WrestleMania 30. That's going to be awesome. I really, hopefully, I mentioned this a couple um, videos ago. I really, really, hopefully, WWE goes huge because of the 30 anniversary of Mania. You know what I'm saying, Tony? Yeah. yeah. So what's your thoughts on this real quick about the uh, 30th anniversary? Do you think they should go big, like huge, or do you think they should say, eh, it's just a WrestleMania? Uh, I think they should go big just because they should outdo what they should do. They should do something bigger than they did with WrestleMania 20. That eh, that wasn't the best mania in, in history, uh, and they should do something way bigger than that. Like, it shouldn't be a, as bad as that mania was. That was my opinion. I didn't care for that mania. I know you want to and all, but I'm just saying, I did, in my opinion, I didn't like the Mania. It wasn't, like, they had a couple good matches, but other than that, it was a pretty bad show. But uh, I'm hoping this Mania, because that was a 20th anniversary, uh, this one's going to be the 30th. I'm hoping that, you know, they'll outdo themselves and they'll pull off something that's never been done before. They'll give us some great matches. Uh, maybe actually should give us some backstage segments, which would be nice because, you know, it's 30th anniversary and they didn't do anything for that like that for this year. But, um, you know, I do believe... WrestleMania 30 will break the 29 record. And we won't see no Jets over the stadium because it's indoors. And I really, hopefully, they do some some good stuff backstage. WWE, if you're watching this, I mean, actually, listen to this. L listen to the fans for once in a long time, okay? Okay, another thing on agenda. I want to discuss, and I know Tony does, about AJ Lee. Now, I know she's a number one contender to face the current Divas Champion. I can't think of him. I can't think of her off of my top of my head. What's her name again? Caitlin. Caitlin. Now, I know... I, I don't know if she's doing pretty good backstage with the other Divas. I don't know what's her reaction. Now, I know she's very sexy and hot. I think that's the only reason that they give her the damn belt. Because that's very sad. Same thing for AJ Lee. Now, you were wondering, you were wondering too, um, a lot of, probably a lot of viewers, when she will be champion. I would say, uh, maybe around payback, I'm guessing, because it's payback, maybe? So, what's your thoughts, Tony? Uh, well, um, Caitlyn actually used to be a model, believe it or not, which actually, it's, why could, why wouldn't you believe that? I mean, look at her, uh, but, you know, um, uh, I... The only reason Caitlyn was cha became champion was because Eve, you know, Eve was done with the, finishing up with the company, so I guess they had they didn't really think of anybody else to throw the belt, and she was feuding with Eve also, so I guess they didn't think of anybody else to throw the belt on. But Caitlyn, and also it was in her hometown of Houston, Texas, at the time when they had the match. Sure. It, yeah, it, it makes them. sense. And uh, yeah, um, AJ becoming champion, I do see it happening. I know WWE before, like a bunch of times before, they've had they've had like I know AJ is not that big. She's pretty small, but sometimes WWE they used to what do you call it? like they always seem to have problems with small with having small champions. I don't know why, but I mean if they had Mysterio win the belt, but that was only because of Eddie. But you know uh, what do you call it? There's no reason AJ shouldn't win the belt. She should definitely win it. I would like to see her as champion. And uh, Caitlyn's been an okay champion, but she really hasn't impressed me. But it's not her fault. WB hasn't really stepped her like you know made her look good as a strong champion. But eh, she really just hasn't impressed me. I mean, I'm a fan of Caitlyn or whatever. She's hot and all. But uh, I just I kind of want to see AJ as champion. I'd rather have AJ as champion than Caitlyn. Uh, so yeah. And by the way, actually, if you believe it or not, Caitlyn and AJ are, were actually on the the. Uh, 
third season on NXT. These two were the last, the last two uh, on the on the show, and then Caitlyn ended up winning. I just thought I'd point that out. So yeah, that's weird. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think uh, AJ Lee is very, very attractive lady, and she, for my opinion, on TV, she looked like a what eighteen year old girl, but she's not really isn't. She has kids, correct? You told me before. Yeah, I've seen photos of her with a, a baby. Man, I wonder if she's married or do you think she has a a, a, a mama, I mean, da, bab, daddy, whatever, how it goes. Uh, ba- um, baby, uh, mama. Yeah, baby, so, uh, yeah. Uh, what do you call? It? Well, I well, she's actually, believe it or not, dating Dolph Ziggler out, outside of WWE. Oh, they are. Yeah. Oh wow. So I'm I'm assuming that is she that's not Dolph's kid. I I would have I would have knew about this if it was Dolph's kid. I'm assuming either this is an adopted kid or it was from somebody else that she was with at the time before she got with Dolph. So technically, there are there are dating on camera and off. Yes. Oh wow. Outside of the storylines. That's cool. Okay. Another thing I want to discuss is about, um, I guess there's a lot of rumors flowing around that Punk will be able to come back around SummerSlam. So that means he will not be able to compete at uh, WWE Payback and that's his hometown in Chicago, Illinois. So what's your thoughts on this story, um, Tony? Um, you know, uh, I'm a big fan of Punk or whatever. Uh, personally, if it's okay with you, I'd like to point out something about the guy. Like, I like him in the ring and everything, but outside of the ring, uh, I just kind of I don't have respect for the guy for what he does to the fans, like how he treats the fans. Like, when they want autographs, I guess he's not an autograph guy because he tears up autograph books when fans want a, a signature. He throws them in the garbage and shit like that. I just don't respect that. I don't know if he's out, but he does this constantly all the time, like when fans are trying to get an autograph. He's done it. It's been reported and all this kind of shit. But I, I like the guy in the ring. But, you know, outside of the ring, I'm just, I don't really respect what he does towards the fans. But back to the subject at hand, uh, uh, you know, Payback is in his hometown and all. I don't, I wouldn't be surprised if he shows up to cut a promo or something like that, you know, to the crowd or some shit like that, like where he can get a reaction or he'll just get booed. But he'll probably still get cheered because it's in his hometown. I mean, they're going to mark out for him. But, uh, I don't see him like wrestling because he's not reported to wrestle, but I do see him showing up. But uh, other than that, um, from there, I hope we I hope we see over the summer when he comes back, we see a uh, Christian and him feud. If Christian's back by then as well, he's supposed to be back pretty soon. But I'd like to see a feud between them. I've stated this before in the past. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool. Uh, I don't know when is Christian come back. I don't know it's taking us so long. I Maybe mean, it's a long healing process. Same thing for. Of uh, freaking um, Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara, they haven't been back yet, and I I'm not a big fan of those guys. Maybe when Rey first debuted in the WWE, he was a great um seat. I mean, he was a great um high flyer. Now he's doing jack shit, but it's not his fault. I mean, actually, his fault. He did too many high flyers in his past, and it finally got to him. You know. Yeah, and also um, I know probably nobody remembers who this guy was, but I just thought to point that out. Uh, it's uh, reported that um, Evan Bourne's doing great, and uh, he should be, he should be back to the be back in the ring by May. Oh wow, that's awesome! So yeah. Um, now, do you think if he come when he comes back, do you think he could, he's gonna be back in like a mid Carter um 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 mid Carter? Well, I uh, you know if what do you call it? I probably yeah pro- because I just don't see this guy as a main event right now. I. To me, it's really hard to see him ever as a world champion. Not because of his size. It's just I wouldn't see WWE pushing a guy like this as a world champion. I just don't see it ever. I mean, they did it with Mysterio, but there, there was reasons for that. But like I said before, but um, what do you call it? I would like to see Bourne, believe it or not, this is my opinion, as a champion or like a world champion. But the, probably the farthest he'll go is as U.S. champion or IC champion. Other than that, I just don't ever see him becoming world champion. But uh, good for, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Good for Bourne. It's good to see that you know his uh, rehab went well and everything. And uh, he recently posted a picture of him with some abs going on, I, and he kind of had some muscles. So I don't know if that some people are assuming that's steroid juice or whatever. Or but you never know. He might be just working out, and working his ass off. I mean, he wants to get back in the ring and everything. And I respect the guy for that. Like that, I I thought this guy was really entertaining. He's way better than Sinkara in the ring. The way Sinkara botches. Oh yeah, I think so too. But um, I just hopefully. Um, if, when he come back, he's gonna be probably in the tag team title shot again with someone. Um, he's a he's a former tag team champion, correct? 
Yeah, he won it once with uh, Kofi Kingston. And that was a good team. Air boom, yeah. And then I think that's what. Uh, then um, then Evan. I mean Evan got hurt, and then they broke it up. Correct. Yeah, he got hurt at a house show. He was he was doing the move or whatever, and then he uh, he got he got fucked up on the move. And this. And ended, sorry, so, sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead and finish. Uh, he uh, he fucked up on the movement or whatever, and that he tore ended up tearing his his uh, ACL or his ankle or something like that. And so that, and that was believe it or not, that was in January, I believe, of 2012. So this guy's been out for over a year. Wow. And this I don't understand. Kofi and Evan Bourne are tag team champions. When Evan went down, um, Kofi was still tag team champion. He's st- they still hold the belts. That is fucking stupid, from my point of view. You agree with this or no, Tony? Uh, I agree with you. And the reason, uh, actually, the reason Kofi was champion when Evan wasn't around is because actually Evan was uh, he uh, failed a drug. He did a dr- he was doing drugs. And he failed the drug test, so they they suspended him for a month. Oh, so, so Kofi was holding the team on his own. That's so, why he was. Evan wasn't around. So why the hell it he, he could be like a handicap match and they just lose belts that way? I'm <laughs> serious. That would be stupid. I would, or just vacant the belts, have a little tournament. I would. Do, hey, Rusty fans, would you prefer like a tournament? When when the time it was um, it was just um, Kofi just hold the belt because uh, Evan been I mean Evan born got suspended. So what's your thoughts? I like to see like a um a tournament for the belts, not just let um Kofi just hold the belts for two. For, um, hold the belt on each shoulder. That's fucking stupid. But that we didn't think like that, you know. Yeah, I would like to see a tournament like that. that that's a great idea, there. Right? Like, um, you know, and maybe have Kofi in the tournament and have him with a new partner. Yeah, but oh well. Yeah. But yeah, they don't think like that. Now, if they have our um taking us our feedback, I bet the W will be a lot better than like it is now. Yeah, it wouldn't be as boring as boring as it is. But yeah, it is what it is, you know. Now. Another thing I want to discuss really quickly is about, I always want to discuss this, about a long time ago when I had the host on Raw. And at first, it was a good idea. Then after a while, it was so fucking boring. Now, Tony, what's your thoughts? I totally fucking agree because let's just say at, be, at the before, uh, what do you call it, like the beginning when it first started, the guest host and all that on Raw, it was great. You had guys like Shaq, uh, who, uh, Steph Green, uh, you know, a couple, a bunch of other guys on there. And then from there, you had guys like Pee Wee Herman, uh, the, the Muppets, um, <laughs> a lot of PG shit going down. Uh, who else? You had like Mark Cuban was kind of cool when Seamus speared him through the table. It was good to see Mark Cuban, uh, you know, as a guest host. That was kind of cool as well. And then you also had Jesse the Body Ventura. You know, uh, as a guest host and all that, and he was the only reason he was there was to promote his book when he at the time when he made that book. But uh, you know, the guest host thing was way better when it first started, and when it when it like what do you call around the time it started ending, uh, it just kind of was was really boring as hell. It was really child childish. You know, it's for like the kids obviously because they're PG. But uh, I guess it's good that the guest host thing is over with. It's dead and buried. Yeah. Now after that. They um, had that um, laptop. Oh my gosh, that was very, very a pain in the ass. Every time Michael Cole comes out, actually, when they had that stupid music, so, oh god, here it goes with Michael Cole. And that thing that lasts, what, a year and a half? Up to Mania 27, I think, right? Yeah, uh, the, the whole guest host thing started I, in uh, 2000 and, uh, I believe, 2000, late 2010, early 2011. It ended around. Uh, yeah, that ended around 2011, like early 2011, like a uh, couple months after Mania, I think around there it ended, like when Michael Cole hung up the, the like put away the computer and all. Yeah, I remember, uh, what do you call it, Edge smashed the computer up? Yep. Then they brought it back, they brought it like a 2.0 computer or some bullshit like that. But uh, the whole that whole general man. oh, I've received an uh, email from the anonymous Raw general manager, and I quote, how about... Quote your ass back to the back and take the computer with you. What kind of go- that was just a horrible storyline. Yes, it was. I wonder who was behind the whole thing. I know no, it's not really a swoggle. um what. Hornswoggle. Oh, was it? Yeah, because remember. Uh, I know about one- no. I'm, I'm being legit. I know that was very sort of, but legit. Who was really behind it? Oh, I don't know. I know, but that's not really a laptop because um I think it was a fake laptop. Was it? Yeah. Very dumb. What kind of laptop? Like. All of a sudden, make like like make the lights go, dim, you know, dim the lights to go on and off. I know this whole stage, and yeah. I know you're wrestling fans. 
I mean, some of them, some, they have good matches, and you don't notice that they only happen at Raw. Another pay per view now, they did like on a few pay per views, correct? Yeah, Mania 27. Remember when, uh, remember when, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the general manager, with the anonymous general manager, like when Cena and, uh, or the Miz got counted, both double count out or something, and then, uh, the Raw came out, and then he said it wasn't going to end like this, and then the anonymous general manager, uh, what do you call it? Anonymous general manager said something, and then the Rock like closed the computer, like through through it, like, and then Stone Cold drove over it with his uh his uh like not on the same night, but I remember Stone Cold driving over it with his uh his ATV. That was kind of cool. Yeah, I'm just happy it's all over, you know. Then they have Bret Hart and the rest of his history. You know, now we have um Vicky. Now speaking of Vicky, do you think? I know she's not the permanent general manager. Do you think, do you think someone's going to take her spot? Uh, you know, I've always wished that uh, since last year on the Raw 1000, I was hoping that the GM was going to be revealed as Edge, but but his contract expiring with the company and everything, and I, he didn't resign. Uh, that kind of was a bummer, so that's why that's the whole thing. They were actually planning to have Edge as the general manager. Oh, really? He never resigned. Yeah, he never resigned, so they, went, they had to think of something else, so they went with the AJ, but... Uh, you know, Vicky, um, you know, I, I, don't get me wrong, um, what do you call it, uh, I, uh, like her as general manager, uh, she's been general manager of Raw before and SmackDown, and, uh, you know, uh, well, I, I, she's been, she's been kind of general manager for a long ass time now, because she was Raw general manager before in the past, but I kind of want to see somebody new, like something, like, brought to the table, you know, that'll impress the fans, how about we just have, like, a general manager, or, like, some kind of, we need like a uh, you know somebody like a uh, what would you say like not like a CEO because that's what Triple H is but somebody that runs both shows not like a John Laurinaitis kind of thing but somebody runs the show seriously you know what I mean so I'd like to see something like that but, yeah yeah I, I like to see one guy or one woman who Raw SmackDown they did it back in the day then I know John Laurinaitis did it for a short period of time I, I don't mind seeing one person on one. Um, two shows, but whatever. But I think SmackDown needs a big boost. Raw's doing, you know, pretty good. You know, they have the ups and downs, like every other um company out there, not just wrestling. Every other company, even uh, basketball, you know. Yeah, even, exactly. It, I know this has nothing to do with uh the WWE. Even basketball gets so boring. The only time it's exciting is for the NBA playoffs. Same, same thing for. I know people are gonna hate me for this, but for college basketball. It's more exciting when you watch March Madness. I mean, because it's it's for the big prize, um, the championship. But that's another topic. But um, sorry, I get uh, sorry, I get off subject here. Um, one more thing before we end this um terrific uh interview. Um, you say right here, or I I, I don't know if this is gonna happen. Um, Cena versus Taker to WrestleMania at thirty. What's your thoughts, um, Tony? Well, I uh, only way, uh, the only way I'd want to see this match is just to see Taker uh, take out Cena, like you know, to Cena job the well, not really job, but like Cena lose to Taker, that would be awesome. Uh, I, I I hate Cena. I'm not a Cena fan, uh, you know. So it's cool if I'm gonna get bashed for saying that, but hey, that's my opinion. I don't like the guy. You know, he takes it to me. He takes advantage of. Uh, you know, kids, sick kids, and everything, just to get money and all that shit. But that's just my opinion on the guy or whatever. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah. So I don't even like to see this match. I guess it would be good on Taker's part. I mean, but Cena, you know, I guess him and his five moves of doom, or maybe by then he'll have more moves to his arsenal. Probably not. But uh, I think this match could probably be probably be good. Their matches in the past weren't that bad when uh, Taker was uh. Taker, you know, was the American badass, and Cena was just Cena was just trying to make a name for himself as the uh, base, the Doctor of Thugonomics and all that shit, his rap gimmick. But uh, I would like to see this match. But you know what? I'm saying that I I would not Cena would not be want to be my dream opponent against Taker at Mania next year. So yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. That was a good match. I think it was Vengeance. Oh three. Oh three. That was a 03, good, yeah. very good match. Now, can you imagine? On a bigger pay per view than Vengeance, it could happen. A lot of people want to see. A lot of people do not want to see Taker versus John Cena because most likely Taker will wipe the floor with John Cena. Yeah. I mean, I could be wrong, you know. On paper, yes. On on uh, TV, that's a different story. But whatever. Now we are now for the first time we are just gonna screw around, everyone. Um, 
I don't know what to say. Um, go ahead and joke around, Tony. <laughs> um, you know, uh, it's a possibility that uh, Jake Thurston think Roberts is going to win the uh, Royal Rumble next year and maybe main event Mania and win the belt. What do you, so, uh, yeah, wouldn't that be awesome, huh, Ryan? What do you think? Uh, oh, yeah. Now, I don't mind to see Jake the Snake in the Rumble. Maybe throw some uh, guys out. Like, give them these. Yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's the word. I know a lot of people hate that word, but it's true. Now, he might throw some guys out and all the good stuff. Get a good uh, spotlight. Now, do you guys think uh, Doug should actually push him and become Doug champion? No. From my yes. point of view, hold on. Hold on, Tony. From my point of view only. I mean, just, just like what happened to um, Booker T and Nash and RVD get a little spot, then um, uh, uh, he get eliminated. And in that same year, put him in the 2014 Hall of Fame class because he's doing great with DDPE and Scott um, Scott Hall. That's just my, how I feel about it, uh, Tony. Uh, what do you call it? Yeah, what do you, ne you never know. Like, uh, DDP, I mean, ask me, uh, Jake does think that he wants to win the son of a bitch, and he wants to, uh, like, he wants to win the belt and all that. And uh, also, uh, you know, hey, you never know. Uh, Scott Hall, race, Scott Hall recently went, went un, uh, he underwent surgery and it was successful, so good for him. So maybe he could enter the Rumble too, and maybe try and him be down to him and uh, Jake the Snake to win it. I don't, I don't know if he wants to go with the old guys. I mean, sorry, my viewers, old guys to win the whole damn thing. I know the older Russian fans want to see. For the first time, Jake the Snake won a um a major belt. He won no belts in W, correct? Ever. I see title. He did? Yeah. I don't remember that. I know Paper no. did. I don't know Jake the Snake did. He, he, I believe he won the IC title. He won no damn belts. I mean my for my oh. for, for my knowledge, maybe in oh, the well, I know I'm in not, the I'm I, hold on, Sorry. I know in the AWA he won a couple of belts, but not in WF or Slash W, he won nothing. I apologize, and I maybe he didn't win it. Probably not because uh, well, you call it. I didn't. Um, I'm a, I'm what you call it. I've like I've watched. I've started watching in the '90s and all that, like the early '90s. So I'm kind of not really under the. But I, I thought maybe he won. I, I've like I've watched matches and all that shit, but. Uh, I guess not. That's right. I was thinking of somebody else. So yeah, my apologies. But uh, you know, we could see a replay of uh, Rumble 2005. Uh, Jake the Snake Roberts and Scott Hall both, both fall over the top rope, and the McMahon comes out. Huh? No, remember in uh, 05 Rumble when uh, Batista and Cena were both got eliminated at the same time? Oh yeah, they, yeah. They restarted it. That's funny. It wouldn't be funny if they do that with Roberts and uh, Scott Hall. I guess they clothesline themselves over the top rope. And I wonder what I, I wonder what would be the next person. To go in um, DDP's rehab. Do you think it'd be another um, guy who's in total mess up and DDP will help him? Uh, probably some guy in TNA. Half of them are, are all drunks, add drug addicts. Yeah, I don't think uh, DDP wants to help those guys out. <laughs> Kurt Angle maybe can do it. Uh, maybe a uh, maybe an RVD. RVD can finally make up his mind where he wants to go. Make up his damn mind, RVD. Yeah, go speaking of that. RVD, when are we going to get a damn announcement? Uh, is, it saying, is it W -E or T? -E? It was gonna happen. He's gonna not gonna say nothing at all. And in the beginning of January 2014, he's gonna make a shock uh, return at the Rumble. That's what people like to make the the shock return at the Rumble or the day after WrestleMania. Yeah, and your RVD could enter, and then he gets eliminated as, as soon as he enters the match. And I don't know. Going back to TNA, screw this. I don't know. It just makes me mad that he's like these like these guys are injured. And no, he's not even talking about it on Twitter, Facebook, or even YouTube, you know? But, yeah. whatever, but, um... Here's a dream match, though, if I may say. Every, I know everybody wants to see this, uh, streak versus streak, uh, what do you call it, uh, what do you call it, uh, at WrestleMania, Fandango versus Undertaker, huh? Yeah. Uh, no. The only reason that's gonna happen, if you play the WWE video game. If, or WWE goes, WWE, like, drinks a bunch of beer and they smoke weed and... The day before Mania, and they, or like a couple weeks before Mania, and they they fucking throw Fandango against Taker. That's the only way that'll ever. If WWE's like on crack or something for a while, I don't know. I don't. Th uh, no thing before we end this interview. Um, I don't think Fan. I think Fandango his music is more popular than himself. That's pretty sad. But hopefully in the future, uh, WWE work on that. But. I just hopefully they don't um, screw this whole gimmick up and all that because he's gonna be a uh, a, a pretty good mid carter 
and maybe if W uh, doesn't F up again, he could be the main event at Mania. And another thing is, I like to see Punk, um, um, main event, any main event. I don't give a shit what it is, just main event for once. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, Mania or um, um main event at Rumble. Yeah, something like that you know. But if if it's Cena, he's gonna take over the spotlight. I don't know why, but it just happens, you know. Yeah. Um... What do you call it? Fandango's music. Uh, yeah, it's more popular than him. But, hey, uh, you know, a good thing for Fandango, though, is you never know, uh, 10, 10, 20 years from now, everybody will be saying, you know, we just had the, we, we didn't give this guy a chance, and what do you know now? He's in the Hall of Fame. Who? Fandango. He will never be in the Hall of Fame. I guarantee you. I mean, I could, I could be wrong, but whatever. If W use him correctly, that's great. If they don't, he's going to get released and probably go to another company like TNA. That's so all, that's, that's it. Go. What? That's where all the jobber smucks go that get released. Hey, my viewers, I did not say that. My friend Tony did. So yes, if you want to, it's all on me. Yeah. So that's it for this episode. Episode seven. So I'll see you guys next time. From your host with the most, Team Rai Rai. And his friend. Yeah, oh yeah, my friend. Oh yeah, I forgot I have friends on here. Tony the Tiger. That's just great. So, anything you want to say flakes. before we end this interview, Tony? Yeah, eat my frosted flakes, bitches. And also follow me on Twitter uh, at the Rated R Viper One. Uh, and also subscribe to me on uh, the Rated R Viper One and the Wrestling Talent. I'm going to have a new a video up pretty soon, so check that out. Uh, yeah, so uh, thanks for having me, Ryan. It's um, Rai Rai. I mean, Steam Rai Rai. And don't forget about it, Mr. And that's about it. And if you want any um, theme songs, Tony Matana will give you a hand. And that's it. And I gotta get out of here because I gotta um, play in a catch. Goodbye, my viewers. Champs out of here. Yeah, this is it. I had enough of this interview. Goodbye.